Welcome to another Altitude University video. In this one, I'm gonna be taking the drone up and showing you my top three real estate shots that I like to get. And then we're gonna take that footage back and edit a final 20 to 30 second video just so you can see a start to finish process for all you beginners out there. I'm gonna push back here so we're at a good distance. Make sure everything around you, you're above everything. We're gonna get a nice push in and reveal shot. So I'm gonna start with the camera down like this and we're focusing on that building straight ahead. And I'm gonna record. And all I'm doing is pushing forward and panning up at the same time. Nice revealing shot, perfect. Do the same thing here, right at this angle, you see the palm trees. Make sure you're above everything in your area. Let's do the same exact shot here. Pushing forward, panning up, easy peasy, aligned right at that 45 angle, awesome. And I'm gonna get one more here, maybe even further, really pushing out. Check your height, make sure you're never above 400 feet. And right here, F stops at five, just like that, our EV is perfect. I'm actually gonna put that at five, six and get one more here showing the whole scene of where we are. Pushing in and panning up nice and slow. No need to go fast with these movements since the building is static. You're in no rush, take your time and make sure you get the perfect shot. Perfect, so that's the push in, that's our first shot. And the second shot we're gonna do is the circle. So with this, you're basically gonna be pushing the throttle one way and rotating the opposite. So I'm gonna be right here and I'm gonna press record. So I'm pushing to the right and I'm actually panning to the left. So that gives you this nice circle motion and the circle shot is definitely a necessity when you're shooting real estate because it's gonna show the entirety of the property just like so. So this first one, I'm not even messing with the camera gimbal since it is a tougher movement to get used to. So you'll see we're kind of missing the bottom of the building there which is totally fine because when we do this a second time, we're gonna go through and actually pan the camera. So I'm gonna stop right here. And this time I'm gonna push out a bit and I'm gonna bring my f-stop up, get that light. And I'm gonna start with the camera down and I'm gonna push left this time and rotate to the right and pan the camera up, giving that nice circular motion and moving the camera at the same time. So we're getting three movements at once. I'm gonna pop out and do the same thing again on this side over here. Make sure we get a nice one right here, there we go. And same thing, pushing to the left and rotating to the right and panning up. Great, just like so. That looks great, you can hear the drone above me there. We're at 160 feet. Keep panning, keep panning. And the key with these movements is keep everything steady. So once you start the movement, just lock your fingers in place and keep them perfectly steady so there's no jittery movements because that is the last thing you want. So I'm gonna start right here and do the same thing, except this time I'm actually gonna start up and pan down. So we'll get a different motion. So same thing here, same movement. We're just moving the camera down instead of up this time. So you can see the top of the building here, real estate agents love to see you know, the top of buildings, so you can see, you know, AC units, vents, and things of that nature. It's a great shot. We get a little faster there. Gives some really cool dynamic. Perfect. And that brings us right here. Perfect spot for our third shot, which is the sink or rise and the pan up or down. So let me show you what that is. So this one, we're going to start a bit higher, say 200 feet right around here and press record. Start with the camera facing straight down. And what you're gonna do is pan up while you're pushing down. Just like so. So I'm panning the camera up and I am sinking my height down. Just like so, it looks awesome. Perfect, and then we can do vice versa too. So we can start lower here to get a different angle. So we can start lower, start with the camera up. We're doing the opposite shot here and pushing up and panning down just like this. 
So this will show a little more of the scale of the building. So instead of coming up on it with the sink and pan up, we're doing the opposite. So you kind of see that top down view. Keep that movement nice and steady. Right here, we'll do that same. One is the first one, we're gonna do that sink and pan up. Maybe get some of the palm trees in here. It will be awesome. We can see a little bit more of the surroundings. There we go. We'll bring that aperture up. Right there. Sinking and panning up. Just like that. Nice and smooth. Just lock the motion in once you start it. Very simple. Awesome. Let's get the drone back. So that only took about 10 minutes. Uh, we got more than enough footage than we need for this example. So we did the three shots, we did the push in, we did the circle, and we did the sink and rise. So these are the top three movements I recommend you to get in practice with real estate videos. Let's bring the drone back and hop into the editing bay and create this video. Just like that, we're here in the editing bay and we're gonna create our 20 to 30 second real estate video from those three different movements we got. I know I look a little bit different, magically got a haircut. So let's jump into the editing bay and create this video. So first off, we're gonna make our sequence here. I'm gonna call this real estate example. Uh, we'll say 20 second, 16 by 901. And for the sequence settings here, 23.976. Frames a second, 1920 by 1080. Go down and that's pretty much everything you need here. So we've got our sequence, put it into our sequence bin. You can see we have everything organized here. Assets, footage, sequence, songs. And what we're gonna do now is create our color adjustment layer. Title that color, put it into assets. And we're gonna drag that here. Uh, our video is gonna be 20 seconds, but I'm gonna make it a bit longer. And I'm going to grab one of my LUTs now. So find your LUT, put it on the color adjustment layer. I'll attach in the description some free ones for you guys to download it and play around with. This specific LUT is only in our 14 day drone pilot pro course and our premier editing course. So what I'm gonna do now that that's on our color adjustment layer is find our footage and I'm gonna drag that up, lock it right there. And I'm gonna go into our footage here and I'm basically just gonna go through these few clips we got and just start laying them out. So I'm gonna go through this first clip here. Let's take a look. Awesome right there, that push in reveal shot. Let's go to our next clip, same thing. Right there, same kind of shot. I think I did it a few times here just to make sure got it right. That one's a bit further out. Awesome, the next clip. We got our circle shots here. So there's gonna be the best angle before we kind of lose the building. And we started, you know, getting some panning up in circle with it like that. Awesome. Let's see what else we're working with. That's a great one too. Might be another section there. You can see a little bit of the entire lot. Let's see here, panning down on the building right there. That's awesome. You can see the top of it. It'd be great for real estate agents to use. And then we have our sinking shots here. And so the sink and then the rise too. So there's our rise with us panning down. So all I'm doing here is just going through all of the shots we got when we were out shooting and just pulling in and out points, scrubbing through, right? So I'm scrubbing through in point, out point, in point, out point. So scrubbing like this is much faster than going to the start of your clip, pressing play like this and waiting for it to run, because then you literally need to go through and watch every single second. So I would not recommend doing it this way. Uh, I recommend going through, find the sections fast. So uh, we're circling here, panning up. I think I got a few shots uh, after uh, we were actually filming out there just to make sure I got everything perfect. So this edit turns out exactly how we want it. There we go, that's great, just like so. And let's see, I think we got another one here. And... Boom, last clip. There we go, so all we did so far is go through and pull our selects. And so now we're gonna lay in our first song and we want this to be in about 20 seconds. So we're gonna have to cut our song down. There we go. We got right there towards the end. So that's 11 seconds. You probably drag this part out a bit longer and just see how this sounds. I'm gonna make the track height bigger there. Let's see how loud this is. So 
actually perfect. Let's go to the outro. Awesome, so that's about 25 seconds. Let's see if we can cut off a bit here. Right there on that next draw. Perfect, delete that, bring that in. And we got the outro, we'll fade that out right there. Command Shift D to create that constant power fade at the end. And then I'm gonna click on these right here, Command Click, and Command Click on that and get that nice fade out. And then cut right here, Command D for that constant power fade. Right here, go to Effects, Low Pass Filter right there. Drag that onto that ending section and we'll keep the cutoff at that and let's listen to here. Let's give that another listen, make sure this is perfect. Awesome, there we go. So we cut that to 20 seconds and now all we need to do is grab our footage and lay it over, match it to the beats how we want and it'll be good to go. So I'm gonna select all the clips and set to frame size since these shots are twice the size of our sequence setting. So image sizes are all 4K, 3840 by 2160. Check our sequence settings, 1920 by 1080, which is literally half of that. So that means they're gonna come in at 100, right? And we want them to be at 50, so they fit the frame size. And so you can see with the adjustment layer already, we have that nice color on it right there. Um, this one obviously turns the greens a little more orange, just a little more of an orange and a blue hue. So we're gonna start with a push in one. Let's find one that's kind of far away. Maybe right there, it's a good one to start with. Let's see how this looks. Right there, we'll go to a bit closer of a push in. Maybe something right there, let's see. Maybe right about here is where we want it. Boom, right there. So we probably don't need this one since that'd be a third push in. Let's see if we get a good circle one here next. Uh, we might skip over that one and use one of these, like that one, that one, probably one of these. So we might use these two, let's see. Make sure we hit right on that beat, drag that over. And I'm actually gonna lock the audio layer so I don't accidentally you know, move it around. Use a later section of this here, this clip. Right there, so all I'm doing is just finding the best sections. I'm just cutting, right? So you can go in, cut the footage like this, cut the sections you want, right? And then press V. So it's all about shortcuts in 14 day drone pilot pro and our premier editing course i have every single shortcut and i go through everything i'm doing i'm moving kind of fast just because i want to show you the entire start to finish editing workflow in a pretty timely manner but if you want to see that in a lot slower of a pace where you can actually get a full walkthrough, check out 14 drone pilot pro or our premier editing course as well this is another shot right here so another circle right there right there let's see that's perfect. Here we go, and then we got a few more shots here. So we don't need those ones anymore. Let's see what we're working with here. That's a good one. Right there, probably not any of those. Um, boom, maybe not that. Definitely these ones I got at the end here, and that should do it. Let's see, we don't need that one. That's a pretty good one actually too. Let's see, let's see what these two, all about trial and error, just popping in clips, see how they flow together. So let's see this part. Right there. I might actually reverse this one, that could be cool. So Command R, or you can right click, go to speed and duration, it's the same as Command R. And I'm gonna reverse it so it kind of fades out here. And then cross dissolve there, fade it out. Right when it makes that last sound. Awesome, so we just need one more clip in there. So it goes from there, maybe we put in one of these, let's see. 
it's a good one. Let's see, let's see, right here. We just kind of need more of it showing there. Something about right there. Let's see how that is. Boom. Perfect. So we laid in our clips there from those three movements. We got, we shot that in about 10 minutes. We just created that in, you know, probably six to seven minutes. So all in all, we've spent less than 30 minutes to create our 20 second video. So all we're gonna do now is go in and color grade our clips and we'll be good to go. So we're gonna go right here on our first clip and just make sure it's selected. The shadows and highlights, adjust this however you want. So I'm gonna bring the shadows down, highlights up a bit and might bring the tint down right there just to bring back a little bit of the greens and even make it a bit colder towards the blues there. And so you can see with and without here. Let's check that out. So it brings back a little of the greens and gives a little more contrast with the shadows and highlights there. And then watch this, all you need to do, Command C, go on to the next clip, Command V. Pretty crazy, right? And you didn't need to do anything except copy and paste it. So editing's all about workflows, so once you do it once, try and figure out how you can skip it a second time to save you time and energy so you can just focus on, you know, things that matter with the actual creativity of how you're piecing together your video. So highlights are a little blown out there. So pop that down, put that down, and then that shot looks awesome. Great framing here with the palm trees and we just reversed it out. So let's take a look at this, uh, this video we made pretty quickly. Um, there's other things we could do, obviously, you know, with keyframing, scale and position, where you can scale your shots in like so, um, like this. To add, you know, a little, a little more effects, but I don't want to go too into depth with, you know, the speed ramping and adjusting keyframes for scale and position and adding blurs and things like that. I just want to show you the start to finish product that we made. So let's take a look what we just made together. So basically we went through, we got those three shots. They were the push in, the circle, and then the sink and rise. And with all three of those, we actually panned the camera up and down to give a little more depth and movement with our shots. We brought that footage back here and we edited this video in about 10 minutes together by pulling selects, going through piecing the clips together, just like a puzzle by matching the beats of the song. And that's pretty much all we needed to do. So can't wait for you guys to take these tips and tricks out in the field with you when you're out shooting and editing as well. Can't wait to see what videos you come up with. We'll see you in the next video.